Welcome to the Babies in Business Podcast. Join your hosts, Rachel and Avram Gonzalez, real life parents and business partners. Each week on Babies in Business, Rachel and Avram create a space for entrepreneurial parents to find their own way. They'll dive into insights on topics like leadership, efficiency, self awareness, budgeting and human psychology as they nurture their family and build their business. Here's your hosts, Avram and Rachel. Welcome back to the Babies in Business podcast. Last week, we shared with you our tips and tricks to turn downtime with toddlers into productive time. And we were actually inspired by some of the same activities in that episode we're going to chat about here today. Yes, very excited about this. In the last episode, we shared with you how we discovered when we went into the garage to assemble the new crib for baby August that our older son, Lincoln, who's almost two and a half, just loved being a part of that activity. Yeah. Right. That was the last episode. But what we also noticed was when he discovered in the garage some of his old toys that we had put up and we had stored... It was like Christmas again for this kid. It was the cutest thing. Oh, oh, look. Whoa. Just re-engagement like they were brand new. He was at one point like caravanning the cars that we had put away (laughs) back back into the house. (laughs) You know, he found this like little girl that's supposed to sit in his tractor that was inside. He remembered that the tractor was inside, took the little girl all the way in and put her in there. He didn't know that, did I didn't see that one. (laughs) So just like all of this wonder and joy and amusement, I think one of the things that I thought was hysterical was he found the baby baby toys. Yes. The ones that he, like the really colorful, obnoxious kind of like little rattles Rattles. and stuff. And he never was really into that set of toys. Correct. But he unloaded and checked out and examined every single one. There was one that looked kind of like a little piece of candy, but it's kind of big and When you turn the ends, like the little wrappers, it makes a a sound. And he just loved that. He went to town on that one. That one was one of the baby toys, and he just loved it. But the thing that I loved was that he saw these old toys, but they were new to him. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that we went out and got brand new toys. It was these old toys. And it wasn't like realization in his mind. I don't know that he actually recognized them. Yeah. I think he, they felt brand new. He might have recognized some of them because he did like some of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> I just thought, what a, a fantastic thing for yeah. a little kid. Yeah. And we have proactively done this twice. Correct. We have shuffled and rotated his toys. Correct. So, like, this was not new to us. But what we started realizing was how impactful newness and novelty is for all all ages of people, not just our little toddler rediscovering his old toys. Yes, absolutely. We have a marketing agency called Digital Harvest, and so many of our conversations lead back to marketing and business. I mean, that's part of the reason why we started the podcast. But I've been thinking a lot lately how there are so many... I'm seeing marketing information that I learned 10 or 15 years ago coming back around And it's being shared about in a different way, but it's the same old principles. And people are going wild over it, right? There's this launch by this guy, Onik, recently. Um, He he called it the slow offer, the slow funnels, self-liquidating offers. The self-liquidating offer, this thing that he talked about 10, 15 years ago, was called the self-funded proposal Mm. by Mike Dillard. It's the same thing. And this guy had a huge webinar about it, and people were talking about it for weeks. Wow. Same principle, packaged a different way. It was made new and novel, and people went bananas over it. Right. As if it were original. As if it were original. And so when you look at how businesses are succeeding out in the marketplace, The marketing messages, right, there's so many of them. Right, yeah. It's hard to cut through the noise. How do you cut through the noise and stand out? It's by saying something different. Yes. You might be doing the exact same thing as your competitors, 
But if you have a different way of framing it, different perspective, different perspective, maybe a different application of the same thing. Sure. That's new and it's novel and it's attractive. Yes. Right. It's the same reason why you can run an ad very successfully for maybe a year or two or however long that is. And then suddenly it seems like it just stops working. Yeah. Well, it's already been seen. It's not new and novel anymore. Right. <laughs> you update the ad, you change it a little bit, suddenly you see better results from it because it's new and it's novel and it's not already been seen. Right. Well, and you just talked about something that you personally know from your education and then seeing someone else come with that same idea and theory and then bring it into the future here, present, and it's the same thing, but it's new and novel. We have the same thing. Like you listening here, you probably know about the Instapot. Right. Is that something new? No. No, no. No, but they're like, the Instant Pot people are like, you can cook these amazing, delicious meals in 15 minutes. It's like, yeah, people have been doing that forever with pressure cookers. Right. Now, this, it's kind of a mashup of things. It is a slow cooker because it plugs in, and it is a pressure cooker because it functions as a pressure cooker. It, you know, pressure cookers work with the water and the pressure and all this stuff, but it's safer. So they could sell the safer aspect of it. So you can plug it in, set it and forget it because it has a timer. You're not putting it on your burner. You would not walk away from those old pressure cookers on the stove and go take a walk with your dog, but you would with this one because it has a timer. So that was their sales proposition to you is look at this bringing the old things into the future, present, here we are, <laughs> mm -hmm. by me. So many people know about the Instant Pot. Right. Look at, look at Hollywood. Yes. Hollywood takes some of the most, you know, iconic movies of our time and other times, and then they remake them. Yes, absolutely. We watched a remake of Overboard. Yes. There's, there's the old one. There's the old one had Goldie Hawn and her husband. Forget cannot his remember. Name. Kirk. Uh, Kurt. Kurt, no, Russell, oh gosh. Kurt Russell? Is it Kurt Russell? <laughs> I'm going to botch yeah. his name, oh my gosh. I should have looked it up. But anyway, Goldie, Goldie Hawn. <laughs> so, oh, original movie, and then there's a newer one that came out. Mm -hmm. There's Anna Ferris and somebody else, and they did a different twist on it, and it was really cute and well done. Right. You know, but it was the same concept. They flipped the genders. That was cool. Exactly. And, and unique. We also saw a remake of the old Roadhouse movie, which I thought the remake was nowhere near as good as the original. The original was like just so pure, straightforward, and the new one was just brutal, right? It was brutal for brutal's sake. But a ton of people watched it and tuned in because they loved the old Roadhouse so much they couldn't stop talking about it for a week on Facebook after it launched on Prime. Exactly. And it was Kurt Russell. I looked it up. It was Kurt Russell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I couldn't let that rest. No. Yes. So, so Hollywood does this all the time. They take an older film and they remake it. But the new generation, current generation, doesn't know it's a remake oftentimes. But they took something that was old and fabulous and brought it into the present and made it brand new. <laughs> and people are re-engaged and love it again. <laughs> So we're small business owners. We have to think about this exact same concept and how we market and present our business and our services. Whatever the rest of the competitors are doing and saying out there, how can we tweak it just different enough to stand out and cut through some of the noise? Exactly. That's what this conversation is about. It's, it's really not about totally changing your services and what you do. No. That is a part of innovation and there is a time for that. All we're talking about is just changing the way that you talk about it. Exactly. Like with Lincoln, with the toys, you know, it wasn't that all of his toys went away. He still has the toys that he loves and adores, but he's introducing, he's seeing these new ones and he wants to bring them in, you know. So how can you take what you have, make it brand new, novel, something different, like you said, to cut through the noise? Yeah. That's our message today. We observed this cute little thing in our son and just couldn't stop thinking about how important this is for the marketing of your business. Absolutely. So we got a question for you. It's our community question for the week. You can engage with us online at Babies and Biz Pod and answer this community question when we post it. It'll be with the show announcement and so forth. What movie remake do you think was better than the original? <laughs> and I want you to keep it civil in the comments, okay? All right, respect each other's opinions about these because some of them are kind of sacred for folks, all right? <laughs> 
We still want to know what movie remake do you think was better than the original. We appreciate you for tuning in to this episode. Make sure to give us that five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of the Babies in Business podcast. Who do you know that would benefit from hearing this episode? Share it with them and post about it on social media. You can find the show notes for this episode, free downloads, and connect with the rest of the community at babiesandbiz.com. We'll see you next time.